Ryan Diego here. And what you just saw was a quick demonstration of the slicer feature mapped to Tractor Pro. Now, if you're not familiar with the slicer, it's a popular feature that was introduced with Novation Twitch. And it's also found on a lot of recent Serato DJ controllers, such as the uh, Pioneer DDJ SX, the SR, and the SZ. And it's also found on uh, Tractor DJ on the iPad. And basically what it does is you can set a floating cue point and then it'll chop your track into eight eight cue points across uh, across eight pads. Now, the benefit of this is that instead of having to have eight, take up all eight cue points, you can basically just set one floating cue point and you've got eight uh, cues that you can use to chop up and uh, remix your track. So we're gonna actually show you how to map this today using Machine and uh, using Tractor Pro. So let's get into it. So before we actually get into how to map it here, I'm just gonna walk through it again a little slower just so you can actually understand what's happening on the controller and uh, in the software. So I've got my uh, same track loaded up here. And if I set a floating cue point by pressing in, I'll let the track play through once just so you can hear how it sounds normally. Ooh. So it's played through uh, eight beats there. And now with this uh, floating cue point set, it's gonna chop, uh, chop the track into eight uh, beats across the pads here. So if I press play, So you can see in the track that it's actually jumping to uh, specific parts even though there's not actually any cue points. So if you can imagine uh, from where you set your in point, there's basically going to be almost like eight invisible cue points that are sliced uh, ahead of that floating cue point. So now let's actually get into how you can map this. So what you're going to need to do is actually download a mapping that's uh, available in the uh, article. And the reason for this is that in this mapping it contains a command that isn't actually in the later versions of Tractor. However, once it's imported, it will still actually work. Um, so once you've downloaded the uh, mapping, what you'll need to do is go to your preferences and go to your controller manager, click add, import TSI, go to import other, and then locate the mapping that you downloaded. And it's gonna be called slicer mapping. And this one is just set up for deck B. Uh, if you want to map this to deck A, what you'll need to do is just duplicate all these functions here and then change the assignment from deck B uh, on all the mappings to deck A. And then I'd recommend uh, selecting a new group and mapping it to those pads. Um, so now we'll need to set our uh, import to the machine uh, mark two virtual input and machine mark two virtual output. And as you can see in the comments section, um, I've labeled them so that it's a little easier to follow along. So in this case, the jump to active, jump to active cue point, uh, it indicates that you should map this to pad one, uh, two, three, four, um, and then going on to beat jump here, uh, it starts at uh, pad, pad two and goes up to three and four. And you'll see that there's uh, multiple mappings for uh, beat jump four, and I'll explain, I'll explain why uh, shortly here. So let's actually uh, get into mapping this here. So we'll start with uh, jump to active cue point. Now this is the command that isn't in uh, later versions of Tractor. So the only way to get this command is to actually import the mapping from the article. Um, you could, you could uh, map cue and cue play. However, it's going to result in more uh, commands and uh, just make the mapping a little more complex. So I, I personally recommend importing this mapping so that you can get this, uh, this command. So we'll start by mapping uh, pad one and move along. All the way up to eight. And now we're gonna map our uh, beat jump here. So we're gonna start at uh, pad two since it says beat jump two. And so what beat jump actually does, this is how the mapping uh, allows you to jump to parts, uh, specific parts of the track, even though you don't have a cue point. So it kind of mimics that slice behavior. And how that works is, uh, in this case, it's mapped to uh, plus one. So what's happening here is that these two pads are triggering 
you've got both these commands mapped to the same pad. So what it's actually going to do is jump to your first floating cue point with this mapping or with this command. And then the beat jump plus one is going to cause it to jump to the uh, second beat uh, after that floating cue point. So that's what gives you that one beat, you know, two beat, three beat, four beat, and, uh, and so on. So we'll go up to uh, beat jump three here. Map that to pad three. And again, this is mapped to plus two, so I would give you uh, the third beat. And we'll map this to pad four. And we're going to come back and map these, uh, these second commands here shortly. Map this to pad five. Pad six. Pad seven. And pad eight. Now, why didn't I map these other ones? Uh, the reason for this is that if I have both of these, um, both of these assigned to the same note, it's not going to give me the uh, beat jumps that I need. So, for certain, uh, for certain beat jumps, you need to have multiple mappings. In this case, uh, we've got two here, so plus two and plus one. And the reason for that is that actually gives us that um, from that fl floating cue point, it's going to jump, jump two, and then another plus one to give us to to get us to that uh, fourth, fourth pad or fourth beat. So that's the reason why uh, this one has multiple mappings. Whereas this one, for example, has uh, just one for plus four. So floating cue points here, one, two, three, four. So we don't need a, a second uh, beat jump mapping for that. So how are we actually gonna map this here? We need to go to our uh, controller editor, and then we need to go to our uh, pads here. and open press. And we're gonna set the uh, type to control change. So this is actually gonna send out a, uh, a second message on top of the, uh, the node value, which, is, uh, which it's already sending out. So if we go to beat jump four, pad four here, it'll map to uh, control change uh, 15. In some cases it might map, you'll see it's kind of glitching and trying to map it to uh, to the note, um, that can happen. So in some cases, it might be best to go back to the controller editor and highlight the pad and go to the pressure tab and look at what it's actually mapped to. So in this case, it's channel one, number 15. So we can go back to tractor. And if it's really giving us a hard time, we can go um, click reset. Go to CC and select 15. So now we can go up to uh, pad six, click learn. In most cases, it's gonna land on that, uh, on that CC message instead of the note message. Go up to pad seven, click learn, and finally pad eight, we'll click learn. All right, so now we've got this uh, set up here. Now let's uh, go and demo this and see if, see if it's working like we want it to. So we'll go back to our track here, set a floating cue point. All right, so it looks like it's uh, working. One thing to note is that pad eight usually it's hit or miss, sometimes it works, um, but for the most part, uh, the other pads will land, will land where they're supposed to. Now there's one command that I forgot to include, which is the Q command. And what this command will allow you to do is will allow you to uh, play your chops while the track is stopped to give you a bit more uh, creative freedom. So how to add that is we're gonna go to add in, go to deck common, and go to Q. Then we need to set our device target to deck B. And then to make sure that uh, it'll only do this when the track is uh, not playing, is we need to go to our uh, modifier, go to deck play, select deck B, and make sure that the value is set to off. Now what we need to do is just duplicate this uh, eight times. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we just need to map this to our uh, eight pads here. Now remember, some of our pads are sending uh, two messages. They're sending a note message and a control change message. So to make it easier to map, we can go to our uh, controller editor 
and highlight our eight pads. Go to the pressure tab and set it to off temporarily. And then we can go back to tractor and this will just make it easier to map because uh, now it's not getting confused about which message to map it to. So we'll continue our mapping, go to learn, our second pad. And as you can see, it's setting uh, note messages, no problem. Once you finish that, turn off learn, go back to the controller editor, highlight your eight pads again, and go to the pressure tab and set it back to control change so that it will send those uh, two messages that you need it to send. And now if we quickly uh, test this out, our track should be sliced into eight cue points and it should play those cue points uh, even while the track is stopped. Scroll back. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial on how to create your own slicer mapping using Machine and Tractor Pro. Now it's likely that this feature is gonna be implemented into a new version of Tractor now that it's already been implemented into the Tractor DJ, but still good practice to create your own mappings and to get familiar with Tractor's controller manager so that you can learn how to make your own mappings that are unique to your setup. So to find the, if you wanna find this mapping, you can actually find the link down below this video. And for more tips and tricks, keep an eye on djtechtools.com.